By hearing this topic, one may consider it to be inappropriate and insensitive, as it is considered in a sensational manner, while others may find it an intriguing and fascinating one which leaves them to their imagination, craving for details. Although rare, these cases often defy our logical understanding of what is possible and challenge our understanding of the role of nurture versus nature in shaping human development. The term given to these kinds of children brought up by wild animals is feral children, as they have been isolated from human contact at a very young age and are looked after by wild animals. In this video, we will be exploring the most famous and well-documented case of 15 kids who were raised by wild animals. Before we go into the details, let's clear your doubt on how this is even possible or what leads to such an event in the first place. Most of them were abandoned by their parents while others wandered into the wild and in other cases, the animals led them into such situations. For example, in 1908, New York Times published an article about a dog who was tagged as a fake hero, as it was discovered that it pushes children into sign to rescue them for rewards. At first, the dog heard a cry from a child out of the river. He leaped in and saved the child, which earned him a reward of beefsteaks. Two days later, the same incident happened, then it started happening every day, which made the neighborhood think that they were hunted by mysterious evil men, so they set up a special watch. This is what they found out when the dog was pushing the kids in deliberately to get rewarded. Although he can't utterly blame the dog as there is what is called classical conditioning, which is a form of learning used to explain the acquisition of certain behaviors. Classical conditioning is a type of learning that happens as the result of the association between a stimulus and a response. This was first described by the Russian psychologist Ivan Pavlov in the late 19th century. He did an experiment where a dog was given food after the sound of a bell. In the consummation of time, the sound of the bell alone made the dog salivate without even seeing food. This may have been the case of the dog who was tagged a fake hero, as the first instance was genuine. A baby did fall into the sign, and he rescued her, so he was compensated. He decided to push children into the sign and rescue them in order to continue getting beefsteaks. I guess animals are not left out of having their selfish reasons. The selfish reason could also be why animals convert children who are lost in the wild to theirs, which brings us to the 15th kid on our list. Number 1. The Leopard Boy The leopard boy who was two years old when he was taken by a leopardess in 1912. The story of the leopard boy of India is a captivating and intriguing example of a child raised by wild animals. He was found in the early 1900s and was said to have been raised by a group of leopards in the Indian forests. The child had no understanding of human language or customs and was described as savage with scars and wounds from living in the forest. Despite attempts to acclimate him to human society, he remained largely wild and never fully adjusted. His story raises questions about the impact of the environment and upbringing on human development and continues to fascinate people to this day. He was discovered by a hunter three years later with a leopardess and her three cubs, one of whom was a five-year-old boy. He was brought back to his family's village in India, but due to his upbringing in the wild, he struggled to adapt to human society. He would only squat and move around on all fours, had calloused knees and bendable toes, and his palms and feet were tough from running on all fours. He was aggressive and would bite and fight with anyone who came near him. He was also unable to speak and could only make grunts and growls. The next on our list is Dina Sanachar. Number two, Dina Sanachar was a young boy who was discovered living with wolves in the jungles of India in 1860. He was taken in by a British army officer and was eventually raised in an orphanage where he lived for the rest of his life. This case is notable because it is one of the first documented cases of a child being raised by animals. Dina grew in the Uttar Pradesh jungle in India, raised by wolves, believing himself to be a wolf in his early years. He was only discovered by hunters in 1867, who then brought him to an orphanage where he struggled to acclimate to human interaction after years of living with wolves. The hunters came across Senekar when they came upon a wolf den, where they were surprised to see a six-year-old boy living with the pack. They determined that it was not secure for the child to stay in the jungle and took him to civilization. However, the hunters quickly realized that communicating with Sanachar would be a challenge as he acted like a wolf, crawling on all fours and only expressing himself with wolf-like sounds and howls. Eventually, the hunters drove the pack out of the cave by using smoke and killed the mother wolf before bringing the feral child back with them. 
Upon arrival at the Sikandra Mission Orphanage in Agra, Sanchar was welcomed by the missionaries who gave him a name and observed his animal-like behavior. Despite being taken away from the pack, he continued to walk on all fours and communicate in wolf-like grunts and howls. He would only consume raw meat and sometimes chewed on bones, a habit he had acquired in the wild. As a result, he became widely known as Wolf Boy. Despite the efforts of the missionaries to teach Shankar sign language using pointing, it became evident that this approach would not work. Since wolves do not have fingers, they are unable to point, and therefore Sanachar had no understanding of the gestures being made by the missionaries. Despite some advancements in his behavior, Sanachar never fully adapted to human society while at the orphanage. He was able to stand upright, dress, and eat from a plate, although he always smelled his food before consuming it. Surprisingly, he even learned to smoke cigarettes, a very human-like habit. Unfortunately, Sanachar passed away from the tuberculosis at the young age of 35 in 1895, without ever fully mastering human language or social behavior. The third on our list is the Russian Bird Boy. Number three, the Russian Bird Boy is a seven-year-old boy who communicates only through chirping. He was rescued in Russia. He lived in a small two-room apartment filled with bird cages and was treated as a pet by his 31-year-old mother who never spoke to him. The child had been diagnosed with Mowgli syndrome and was unable to engage in normal human communication. A social worker helped rescue the boy and described him as chirping when someone talks to him. Authorities say the child was not physically harmed, but is suffering from Mowgli syndrome and cannot engage in any normal human communication. The next is Marina Chapman. Number four, according to Wikipedia, Marina Chapman, born in 1950, is a Colombian British woman who gained notoriety for her claim of having spent a significant portion of her childhood in the jungle, surrounded only by a colony of capuchin monkeys. She was eventually discovered by hunters and was taken in by a local family. Marina has since written a book about her experiences and has become a motivational speaker, sharing her story with audiences around the world. Marina Chapman says her mobility isn't what it used to be, and she struggles to climb trees or even swing from them. She is estimated to be around 60 or 62 years old, although she isn't certain. She is small, muscular, and flexible, and at times her appearance seems more like an animal than a human, with a simian and feline beauty. It's not surprising that Marina seems different from others considering her unique upbringing. She claims to have spent about five years living with monkeys in the Colombian jungle, with no human interaction. During this time, she learned to survive on her own, eating fruits and roots, sleeping in tree holes, and walking on all fours. When she was rescued by hunters, she lost her language and was then subjected to a difficult life, including being sold into a brothel, living as a street urchin, being enslaved by the mafia family, and finally being rescued and moving to Bradford, Yorkshire. Despite the unbelievable nature of her story, many have chosen not to believe her, and most publishers declined to publish her book because they deemed her a fraud. On a snowy day in Bradford, Marina's home is filled with books, music, and pictures. Her husband, John, is a retired scientist who plays the church organ, while her daughter Vanessa writes music jingles and daughter Joanna works for a pregnancy crisis center and has three children. Marina speaks with a unique blend of Colombian and Yorkshire accents and shares her first memory, which is often being taken by two people when she was found around five years old. She thinks she was drugged with chloroform and taken deep into the Colombian rainforest where she was left behind. She walked for days looking for signs of human life, but found none. Eventually, she came across a group of monkeys and decided to stay with them. The monkeys ignored her, but this was a blessing as they could have easily turned on her. She became envious of the close relationships and fun the monkeys had and wanted to be a part of the group, but they were not interested. This brings us to number five, Oksana Malaya. Oksana Malaya is a Ukrainian woman, known for her dog-like behavior, and has been the subject of several documentaries after being found living among wild dogs in the village of Nova Blagoveshchekna. At the age of eight, her alcoholic parents had abandoned her outside, and she instinctively sought refuge in a dog kennel. For the next five years, she lived with the dogs, sustained by scraps of food until the local police, who had never dealt with a feral human before, rescued her using food to distract the hounds. Despite the time she spent with the dogs, Malaya lived a largely feral life outdoors until she was rescued by the police. Assimilating Malaya into society and teaching her how to behave like a human again was a greater challenge than separating her from the pack of dogs due to her strong bond with them. Malaya, who was made a ward of the state, 
was placed in several psychiatric institutes and group homes where she eventually regained her ability to talk due to her prior exposure to language, despite initially being unable to speak and walking on all fours. Malaya received comprehensive language education and regained the ability to walk upright at an orphanage school. Despite being in her late 30s, she still needs support at an adult care center and is unlikely to achieve full independence. Her speech is often monotone, resembling an order, but her instinct to hide objects remains intact, reminiscent of a dog burying bones. Next on our list is number 6, Victor of Aveyron. Victor of Aveyron was also known as a wild boy of Aveyron, who was spotted in a wooded area in France as a child, was roaming alone. He was discovered in the late 1700s with evidence suggesting that he had been raised by wolves and had no knowledge of human language or behavior. Despite this lack of socialization, Victor eventually learned to communicate and adapt to life among humans. For several years, the locals tried to bring the wild child into their homes, but he always managed to escape. However, in January 1800, he finally came out of the woods and was taken in by the community. Despite their efforts to care for him, the boy was unable to speak, pulling off clothing, and often ran on all fours. He appeared deaf, as he did not respond to speech, but would respond to sounds related to food. He was dubbed the Wolf Child due to the belief that he had been raised by wild animals. The boy was eventually sent to the National School for the Deaf in Paris, where he was declared an idiot due to his lack of speech. But a young physician named Jean-Marc Itard took an interest in him and took him to his home. Along with his assistant, Madame Guerin, they began a program of sensory stimulation, teaching the boy basic concepts and helping him to enjoy being around people. Despite repeated attempts, they were unable to teach him to talk, but eventually he learned to read and write enough to communicate some of his needs. After several years of intense instruction, Victor had become a pleasant and sociable person. He also demonstrated empathy, as evidenced by a story about the death of Madame Guerin's husband. When he saw her crying, he realized why and removed the extra plate from the table, never setting it again. Dr. Itard felt that Victor had progressed as far as he could and he became a well-adjusted individual. And number seven is John Spunya. John Spunya was born in the midst of the brutal civil war that plagued Uganda during the 1980s. Spunya experienced tragedy at a young age. His father, who was suspected of murdering Suspania's mother, left him to flee into the jungle. This act of running away may have saved Suspania from being forced into becoming a child soldier, as was common during this conflict. Suspania's father was later found hanging, leaving the young boy to grow up amidst the dangers of violence and war. John was found by a village in 1991 and adopted by a local family who taught him to live as a human again. He later became a musician and has appeared in documentaries about his upbringing by monkeys. Suspenia remembered the initial encounter with the vervet monkeys in the jungle. After being isolated for a few days, the monkeys approached him offering food such as nuts and sweet potatoes. The primates were initially wary of the boy, but after a couple of weeks of observation, they concluded that he posed no danger and allowed him to accompany them on their journeys through the jungle. The monkeys taught Sabunya essential skills such as foraging for food and climbing trees. When Sabunya was found living among the monkeys, he was barely recognizable as human. He had a lot of hair covering his face and body, and he acted like a monkey. At first, the frightened locals mistook him for a monster. After rescuing him and shaving his hair, which didn't grow back, it became clear that Sabunya's appearance had changed dramatically. He had white knees from walking on them, nails that were long and curled, and was not yet trained in human habits. Although we can never know exactly how much time Sibunya spent with the monkeys, it undoubtedly had a significant impact on him, as noted by his adopted father, Paul Wasawa, recounts. The next is the bear boy, number eight. In 2016, a young boy named Tsarin Tapchit, about three years old, was found hale and hearty in a Siberian forest that is home to bears and wolves and away from his home village of Kut, Russia. The boy reportedly followed a puppy into the forest on a Sunday morning and couldn't find his way back. He survived on chocolate candy he had in his pocket as he was found after three days. Those that found him were thankful that nothing bad happened to him as he was in a place where there were lots of bears and wolves. This is a typical story that makes people believe that there are unknown powers that be that watch over us, especially in times of need. This brings us to number nine, the Nigerian chimp boy. In a news story published 20 years ago, it was mentioned that a disabled Nigerian boy was adopted and raised by chimpanzees for 18 months. He was named Bello by the nursing staff at the Tudden Maliki Tori home in Kano. At the time of his discovery, he was found with a chimpanzee family of the Falgor Forest, 150 kilometers of South Kano. Bello is believed to have been two years since he was taken in by the chimpanzees. 
It is also believed that he is the son of nomadic ethnic Fulani people who traveled through the region. When he was first brought in, Bello, who was roughly the size and weight of a four-year-old, walked in a manner similar to a chimpanzee, supporting himself on his hind legs with arms dragging on the ground. At the time of this report, he was still leaping chimpanzee-like and clapping his hands over his head repeatedly, cupping his hands as monkeys do, and was not able to speak but make chimpanzee-like noises. Next is Marcos Rodriguez Pentoya. Marcos Rodriguez Pentoya was born on the 7th of June 1946 in Enora, Spain, is a noted feral child. He was sold by his father to a farmer when he was about six years old. The farmer took him to the Sierra Morena Mountains to help out an aging Gothard. Not long after that, the old man died, so Marcos was left alone. Having been subjected to years of beating from his mother, he opted for solitude in the mountains and made no attempt to return home. He had already learned how to fend for himself before the passing of the old man. Marcos then established a special bond with some animals and got himself a family of wolves. Marcos also had a snake as a companion. When Marcos was brought back to society, he found it very scary and wanted to return to the mountains, as he considered humans noisy. He was all crooked from walking in the mountains that they had to put a piece of wood in his back to help him walk straight. People disputed the authenticity of this story as he is able to recall and tell it by himself, but when they look at his behavior, they see that he behaves like an animal. As he stated that the first day that they gave him a bowl of soup to eat, he did not know what to do with it, so he dipped his hands in the bowl not knowing it was hot and jumped up, accidentally destroying the bowl of food. He also recalled that people seeing how naive he was decided to take advantage of him. Instead of taking him to where he can learn to read and write, they took him to learn to fight so they can use him to shoot and kill. This is such an interesting story as it shows you the nature of men and to what extent they are willing to go to get what they want. Over to the next on our list, number 11, Shemdio. In 1972, a four-year-old boy who displayed wolf-like behaviors was found in the forest of India playing with wolf cubs. He had a physical characteristics like long hooked nails, calluses on his hands and knees, sharpened teeth, and a craving for blood. He enjoyed hunting chickens and was comfortable in the dark also forming close bonds with dogs and jackals. Named Shemdeo, he was taken to the village of Nariampur and learned sign language, although he never spoke. He was later taken to Mother Teresa's home for the destitute and dying in Lucknow, where he was renamed Pascal. English travel writer Bruce Chatwin visited him before he died in 1985. Next is Kamala and Amala, number 12. They were two sisters from India who lived in the early 20th century and were renowned for their extraordinary physical strength, stamina, and mental acuity. They were born in Karnataka and brought to the attention of Dr. S. R. Ranjargan of Mysore University, who tested them and confirmed their advanced capabilities. Their remarkable physical strength and mental prowess made them famous in India and beyond. They were even featured in magazine articles. Unfortunately, Kamala died in 1925 and Amala in 1929 leaving behind a legacy of remarkable physical and mental abilities. And number 13, Andrei Tolstik. Andrei Tolstik was left behind by his parents at three months old and was raised by their family dog for seven years. Due to the lack of human interaction, Andrei was unable to speak and displayed canine behaviors like crawling on his hands and feet, biting, smelling his food, and exhibiting wild manners. Andrei, from Siberia, was raised by a dog from three months old after being abandoned by his parents. Seven years later, he was discovered living in a remote Siberian area where his parents' absence went unnoticed. His rescue occurred when social workers investigated why he had not enrolled in school. Andre's lack of human interaction caused him to be mute and develop canine traits, making him apprehensive around people at the orphanage he was taken to. He exhibited aggressive behavior he sniffed his food but quickly adapted by walking on two feet and using utensils within two weeks. He communicated using simple sign language. Next is Sujit Kumar, number 14. Sujit had problematic behavior as a child. He was locked in a chicken coop by his parents, with his mother later committing suicide and his father being murdered. His grandfather became responsible for him, but still kept him confined. At the age of eight, he was found on the road, making clucking noises and pecking at food. He displayed avian behaviors, like crouching on a chair like a roost and making rapid clicking sounds with his tongue, and his fingers were bent inward. Due to his aggressive behavior, he was tied to a bed in an elderly care home with bedsheets for over 20 years. He is now over 30 years old and is taken care of by Elizabeth Clayton, 
who rescued him from the home. Finally, the last on our list is the Wolf Children of Midnapore. Number 15. One would think that this is one single child that these kinds of things happen to, but that is not the case, as in 1972, a group of 15 children was discovered living in a forest with a pack of wolves in Midnapore, India. They had been abandoned by their parents when they were young and had adapted to their new environment. The children were able to communicate with the wolves and learned to survive in the wild. After being brought to a hospital, the children were taught how to interact with other people and were eventually reunited with their families. This story is an example of the resilience of human nature. The stories of kids raised by animals are one of a kind, offering insight into nature versus nurture. They defy expectations and demonstrate the strength of the human spirit. Regardless of whether they were brought up by wolves, monkeys, dogs, cows, or any other species, these kids have overcome immense obstacles to adapt to human society. We hope you found these tales to be enlightening and that they have kindled your interest in the captivating subject of animal-raised children.